So we want to calculate the mass of 35.40 uh, moles. And I gave you a molar mass so we didn't have to go through that business of adding it all up. By the way, there's a great app for that. Hopefully by now you're all good at calculating molar mass because this is when I tell people there's an app for that. And it's just called CMM. I never say it beforehand. Once you learn how to do it, you basically type in the formula that spits out the uh, molar mass, percent composition, a bunch of other information. So you're okay to use that, except on the exam. On the exam, I want you to you know, actually calculate. Right. So I, have, I want to know the grams, so I don't need to know the mass. That's going to be, right, 35.40 moles times, and then to set it up so the units cancel, grams for every one mole of CO2. So then the moles of CO2 will cancel out and I'll end up with grams. So that one's a straight multiplication. Um, if you're doing any work where somebody has to follow what you're doing, so example, uh, lab reports or anything like that, this is how you should write it out. Don't just say this times this without units because it doesn't make any sense to anybody. So that ends up being uh, 1,557.95, and I have four sig figs, so it ends up being 1,558, that's grams. Okay, so go ahead and do the next one, and then we'll do the next two. You'll notice the next one is to calculate the moles after this, this one, so. And I'll go ahead and write it up here, and then you guys can check your answers. And for those of you at home, can pause the video. Sorry. That's what I say when I'm recording videos. Same way. Bless This seems about right, though. Well, since I'm the teacher, not to do. <laughs> I have very fat fingers. I'm double checking my calculations. Yep. That's it. Plus there, just I don't know why. And I'll do the next one too. Go ahead and work on the next one. Oops. If you have trouble, let me know. Anybody have questions? Yeah, Follow along. Real stupid, but why did you move the this one to Oh, because sig figs represent the number better. So. Because it has three, but it has five places, basically. Yeah. yeah. So I 
as, otherwise I could have rewritten it as like one nine one and then just drop those numbers like that and put the placeholders. But generally speaking, the, the numbers get bigger than four or five digits usually so go side to the quotation. Okay. Um, yeah, what you do doesn't really matter to me. I just have to be able to recognize it like on the exam answer when it's multiple choice. That, yeah, any difference. Yeah. Then and that, that's different already different. happened uh, uh, once on an exam this semester. On the first exam, somebody was like, oh, I, I don't see this answer. I was like, what's there? And they're like, oh, I forgot to. Oh, okay. Exactly. But however you do, it's fine. Um, but like for all, if you're go, going to go on and take more science classes, this is how you have to show your work. So you might as well just get used to doing it, right? Writing everything out, showing the units, showing what cancels out, stuff like that. Except for engineering classes, sometimes I don't care, but that's a different story. <laughs> All right, now we're going to review formula ratio. So, you know, what's the formula for, for carbon dioxide? Oh, yeah, sorry. There, and then 2.17 moles of CO2. Mm -hmm. Got distracted, sorry. Okay, so uh, what's formula for carbon dioxide? All right. What does that mean? Carbon, yeah, yeah. So it's like a two to one ratio, right? So we call that the formula ratio. So we're going to calculate the moles of oxygen in two point five three grams of carbon dioxide. So if you wanted to do that, you would still going to be starting with moles on this side. We're going to say. 2.53 grams of CO2, and then you have to convert it into moles of CO2. So it's going to be still 44.01 grams for every one mole. So that'll cancel. This is for CO2, and then it's the formula ratio, right? It's two moles of CO2, or uh, sorry, of O for every one mole of CO2, like that. Oh, bad calculator. 2.53 divided by, I just used a 44.01. Should have brought my good calculator. Zero one times two zero point one one four nine. So I get zero point one one four nine seven. Um, but it's three sig figs. So we'll put it here. So zero point one one five mole o. Also, the other thing when you're doing calculations, especially for labs, write the unrounded number and then round it after you're done writing it. This. This. Yeah. Okay. So it's asking for just moles of oxygen, right? So what I what I've done up this is grams. And then I convert it into moles of CO2, right? But it wants to know moles of oxygen. It doesn't want to know the moles of CO2. So once I have the moles of oxygen, I use the formula ratio to figure out how much oxygen there is. So there's two oxygens, right, for every CO2. So that's where the two comes in, okay? And, and again, showing your work like this, good way to logically go through a problem and get to the right answer. Instead of getting, oh, I got moles, and then what do you do, right? A lot of people just stop. But it's looking for moles of oxygen. So you do the same thing. Um, so here's copper two phosphates molar mass. You do the same thing for, hang on. Go ahead, the next one, hello? Go 
all these emergency numbers. I'm like, I'm just calling through nothing. All right. Yeah, what do you have to do on this one? You, you have to write the formula for it, right? That's the first thing. So go ahead and do that, and we'll see how you do. I'll write it over here. What's that number again? I Three eighty point five seven one. So you need to know the char charge of the copper ion, and you need to know the charge of the phosphate ion, and then you can combine them. So what's phosphate's charge? Three minus. Three minus, right? And it's PO4. If you know from the periodic table where phosphorus is, you know this got four oxygens to it. So copper phosphate, copper two plus, because the two in the formula, right? And then phosphate is PO4 three minus. So this is going to be Cu3PO4 in parentheses two, like that. So it's three moles of copper for every mole of copper phosphate. So this is Cu3PO42 here. So that's one mole of Cu3PO42 and three moles of copper. Like that. So again, these are all essential ideas for what we're going to do in this. This whole chapter is just based on these ideas. Who struggled with the chemical formula? What was the problem? Just couldn't remember like what to do or the ion charges or? So there is a practice quiz for like chemical formulas and stuff. It's, it's up, I think it should be active. So 17. Point eight divided by three eighty point five seven one. This will be times three, and that says uh, zero point one four zero three. And I have three sig figs, but this is moles of copper. That's what I'm left with after all this junk cancels out. Right? Moles of Cu, and then you round it. If you have trouble with these things, just feel free. I mean, anytime you drop by. Not tomorrow. I have to take, take my mom here for it. You know, those things. It's not my office hours tomorrow anyways. But like today is not my office hours. I'll be around here somewhere. So happy to help you guys learn this stuff. I can even meet you guys in tutorial if you want to go over there. <laughs> All right. So just real quick. And you guys got that okay? Got the concept of the mold ratio, formula ratio? Okay, so what do we call those numbers in the front? Uh, huh? Coefficients, yeah, right? And uh, we're going to call it stoichiometric, long word, coefficients. So there's a concept, it's called the reaction ratio, right? And it's like a formula ratio, but it's for reactions. So I don't know what you call this compound. I didn't think to name it, but it's some sort of a mean. There's two of those, right? For every 
how many CO2s? CO2, it's not O2s. Oh. Okay. So I have two for every six, right? So this is, this is what we call a reaction ratio. It's two moles or two molecules. It doesn't really matter, either one. Two moles of C3H5N, right? For every... And we're going to say equal, and I'll, I'll show you another symbol here in a second. Six moles of CO2. And that's my reaction ratio. Now, that's not a ratio, but the ratios, there's two ratios that come from every equality like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little qualifier in here. You won't see this in your book, but it's a little omega, actually, on top of the equal sign. And actually, that means chemically, those two things are equivalent. They're not the same, but chemically, these two things are the, the, the equivalents of each other. So every time I use two moles of this compound on the left, I get six moles of carbon dioxide out. So just like in the formula ratio, when we talked about, you know, two oxygens for every CO2, it gives me the ratio for those, um, for these compounds in this chemical equation. So the, the mole ratios for that particular one would be two moles of C3H5N for every six moles of CO2. Or it could be written the other way because most ratios can be written either up one side up or the other side up. So it could also be or, right, uh, six moles of CO2 for every two moles of C3H5N, like that. And these are the mole ratios, or the reaction ratios. The word stoichiometry, it comes from uh, sort of the Greek terminology that you use for the military. And these guys would always, you know, when they marched, they were always in step with each other. So it, who was in marching band? Yeah. So you guys will get the concept if you weren't in marching band. But if you do a pinwheel, do you know what a pinwheel is? It's when you started like this and, you've, and everybody walks and they fan across the field like this. And the guy in the middle did the easiest job in the world. He does this. And then they always put the short guy on the outside. And guess what they're doing? They're just like this. And they try to keep the wheel in, but they're trying to stay in step, right? That's the whole idea. That's where this term comes from. So the idea is when this reaction takes place, it's going to go to two to six ratio. The inside guy is the two, hardly moving at all. And the outside guy is the six. And he's running around the circle, but they always go in step with each other. Okay, so give me the reaction ratios for H2O and NO2. Because it doesn't have to be reactants products, it could be any combination of those. All right, and write them down, and I'll write them down, and then we'll see where we get. So this is for H2O and NO2. So write down your reaction ratios. If you have questions, Ask, but try to do it without looking up and then see if it matches. That's the way you'll know if you have a question or not. All right, is that what you got? Those are the ratios you'll use in the next calculations, right? Not the, the one, I'm gonna give an example with some terminology, but we'll use those, that kind of mole ratio in calculations to determine how much like water gets formed by a reaction or NO2 gets formed by a reaction. Okay, seems straightforward. Okay.
Okay, so uh, there's lots of ways you can do this example. I think your book does one with cakes or muffins or something. So you might want to look at that one. But I always like the bicycle factory. This is an old one. It goes goes back forever, right? When I was preparing notes back in the late 80s, so think about that. I was uh, like a sophomore in college in the late 80s, mid, actually mid 80s, early 80s. I don't know exactly when. Graduated in 82, so that, that tells you. Right after I went to college, uh, I, I helped TA a class and I used the same example back then and I got it out of a book. So this example has been around forever. It's called the bicycle factory. So when you, what, what's the, when you make a bicycle, okay, you can boil it down to this. You have frames, arms, okay, frames, and you have wheels, and you get bikes. Very simple. Okay. Guess there's other parts, right? Let's just assume this is all the parts. Is that balanced? No, because how many wheels do you need? Two, right? If you don't have two, what is it? It's a unicycle, so we'd have to change the equation, right? So if you get a different product, you have a different set of reactants sometimes, the two wheels. That's my, that's my balanced equation, right? So, so frames and wheels, right? Um, and this example doesn't always work out so great just because, you know, it has to be whole numbers. We, we try to deal with whole numbers, but we're going to get fractions when we do stuff like this. Um, but th there's, there's mole ratios for this. It's like chemical reaction. We can make mole ratios for this. We can say two moles of wheels, not that you'd ever have that many, for every one mole of frames. Or we can say uh, one mole of frames for every two moles of wheels. And those are... Oh, I'm gonna finish and write frames up here. Got lazy. Um, those are your reaction ratios. That's the rate at which stuff gets used. Right. So if you had to calculate how many wheels to order or things like that, you would use these ratios. Now you might not necessarily write it down because you kind of know two to one, right, for bicycles. So what we're gonna do is this: we're gonna do a, a simple calculation. Right. You have five frames and eight wheels, and you want to calculate the theoretical yield. What does the theoretical yield sound like to you? Yeah, total number you can make, like in theory, right? So how much you could make? Assuming all your Re reactants got used up to their fullest, that's how much you can make. Well, how many could you make with five frames and eight wheels? Four, how do you get four? Two wheels per frame, right? That's the mole ratio that you're using in that kind of calculation. But to do it, did you just say, oh, wheels divided by two, it's four, that's it. You had to do something else, right? You had to look at the five frames and so I could make five bikes from that. And then I could make four from the wheels. And then in your head, you put the idea together, I could only get four. Because once you got to four, what happened? You're out of wheels, right? You have to get more wheels, otherwise you can't make bikes. So oh, it'd be a sad bike, right? Because you'd be still on the ground. All right, never mind. Yeah, so theoretical yield is calculating, is calculated from the limiting react. Okay, our limiting reactant in this case is wheels. The limiting reactant runs out during the reaction. Because you got to think about a chemical reaction. As the chemical reaction goes, takes place, stuff is constantly being used up. You're using up your inventory. Eventually, you'll run to zero. So in your head, you have to do a comparison for each reactant 
or on paper, you have to do comparison for each reactant to see how much you get made, how, how much you can make, and then you're gonna figure out, I have a limiting reactant, and that's how you can figure out how much you can make, okay? So the calculations though, it, the way you actually do it is, is you use reaction ratios like this. Um, let's see, one frame, one mole of frames, or one frame, I'll just do this frames, is equal to one bike, that you knew, and you knew one frame is equal to two wheels. So you got those also, these, that, those also came from that same equation because they all have to go together. So we're gonna say like this, five frames, and we're, we're calculating the number of bikes, sorry. And this comparison that you're making in your head is one frame for every one bike. So frames will cancel and you end up with five bikes. And then from the wheels, do the same calculation. Again, it's the comparison you made in your head. I have eight wheels. And it's one bike. for every two wheels. And the wheels will cancel out and you end up with four. And your brain naturally knows, I mean, you naturally know, oh, I'm only gonna make four, because I can't get to five, right? So your limiting reactant is your wheels. And you actually only knew that because you did this calculation in your head. So theoretical yield is how much you can make. Limiting reactants is the thing that runs out that determines how much you make. And oftentimes you have to do a comparison. Like you have to actually take all the reactants and say, how much can I make from each? And it's always the one that's less that comes from the limiting reactant, okay? Now there's also a thing called the percent yield. So let's say I was working in your bike factory and I'm gonna screw stuff up, so I will. I'll lose a part, I'll lose a wheel. Be like, I don't know where that went. I lost a handlebar grip the other day. I was fixing my son's bike. Handlebar grip, it was sitting on the, on the, on the bike rack of another bike. I had it, I walked around, I came back, I couldn't find it, my wife couldn't find it. So then I knew I was in trouble. And it took like 30 minutes to find it and it was sitting right in front of us. And she, anyways, if mom can't find it, it doesn't exist, that's to say. So percent yield is what you make, okay, percent yield is actual over theoretical times 100, okay, that gives us our percent. So in this case, the actual, if I made three bikes, my percent yield, and I'll use a Y for that, is three, my theoretical yield is four. Right? Times 100, that ends up being 75%. Now we're going to do the excess reactive, okay? What's the excess reactive? Frames. Yes, frames, it's what you have left over, okay? How many do you have? You have one, right? How did you do that? Yeah, how did you get? How did you figure out what was left over? Yeah. Yeah. 
that's also determined by the limiting reactive, right? You had to figure out how many you used and then you subtract it. It's like a comparison. You had to figure out how, how much you started with, right? Minus how much you used. All that comes from the limiting reactant, figuring out the limiting reactant. So a lot of things get calculated from that number. What is that? I spit on the screen. I'm like, what's that thing? Big blob. So, um, the excess reactants, what left, the calculation for excess is what you started with. Minus what was used. Okay. So what you started with was just five. I think five, right? What you used was figured out from the limiting reactive. You made four bikes. You can do it from the four bikes or you can do it from the, the actual wheels. Um, I'll do it from wheels. You had eight wheels. And then it's two wheels for every one bike. And that gives us four. And when you subtract it, you got one. Okay. But that's how, like, I know this is like a, seems like an oversimplification, but this is what you'll be doing in this whole chapter is figuring out like different quantities, like how much you started with, how much you could end up with. Right. If you have two things, you got to figure out for each quantity that you're given, how much of a product you can make. Okay. And then sometimes you have to calculate excess and then people get lost in the the terminology but if you just know what you started with and you subtract how much you use that's what you're going for you'll get the answer okay i'm already on page three of four this is like really short my goal is uh, hand back all the papers today and you know be done early I wish. You okay with that? I gotta uh, leave by nine, so I'm okay. <laughs> oh there, hurry up. Okay. So um, moldable conversions. Okay. So sometimes so the difficult part of this is you're gonna be different given different starting points. Sometimes you'll be like given masses of wheels and you gotta figure out how many you have. Right? masses of a compound and figure out how much you have. We're going to be doing it in moles. So if I have, right, it says calculate the moles of B required to completely react with 3.75 moles of A. Okay, so this is my comparison of my, I'll need a mole ratio for that. So I'm going to say moles of B, this is what I'm trying to find, right? And I'm going to start with 3.75 moles of A. And then I can use my mole ratio. What's the mole ratio for this one? Yeah, it's a three to, it's a three to two, but it's uh, two moles of B, right, up top for every three moles of A, yeah. Put two. I don't know why I was doing that. It's early. And so you get your fancy dancy calculators out. It's so hard to get my calculator back into my bag. 2.5. So I end up with 2.50 moles of B. So if you're doing a reaction and you want to know how much B to measure out, this is how you would figure out how much B to measure out. Now, you're not going to measure it in moles, you'll do it in grams, and so we'll have to do that whole gram per mole conversion. All right. Let's say you want to make 7.5 moles of C. You need to know how, and you want to know how much B, you're going to need to do that, right? Theoretical yield calculation. So we're going to go B, right, moles of B. Again, just because it's asking for moles of B, I could ask for anything at this point, really. I'm going to give, start with moles of C. Okay. 
and then I need my mole ratio. Yes. Two yeah, two moles of B over four moles of C. Now somebody's going to say, well, why can't I just do one to two? I know you could do that. For me, it's a lot because it's the same ratio. Right? For me, I prefer just using the numbers that are in the equation. So when I look back at it, I don't go, where did I get that one half from? Just whatever you're given. So that's going to be 3.75. Oh, wait, is that 3.75? That's weird. I didn't mean for those numbers to come out the same, but they did. Okay, so look at this question. Tell me um, what's different about this one. It says you have five moles of A and four moles of B. How many moles of C could be produced? Right. How's that problem different? You have to figure out which one's limiting, right? Because you have quantities like this is like bicycles and wheel frames and wheels and bikes, right? And I've given you frames and wheels, and you want to know how many bikes you can make. You always have to take each one of those and figure out how much of the product you can make. So this is a what we call again a limiting reactant situation where I have quantities of both, and I want to make C, right? So I have to figure that out. I have to figure out how much C each one could make. So I'll go back. Again, it's the frames and wheels. It's, this is my equation up here. I'll go back to this one. I'm going to go moles of C. I have five moles of A. And then I need a mole ratio. And I'm going to go moles of C. I'm going to go four moles of B. And then I have a mole ratio. So fill those in and figure out which one's going to run out. I'll, I'll write it up here, but I won't say it so you guys can do it in peace. Don't worry about sick figs on this one. So they reported everything as integers, unfortunately. I know I almost did the calculation. Multiple choice answer. <laughs> okay. Who says the answer is A? All right. Who says B? Who's not there yet? No way. Who says C? <coughs> I will tell you, invariably, somebody wants to answer C. It's got to be C. I got to add them together, right? But what you're doing is you're calculating how much you could make from each. And when you make this, right? So the answer is this. When you make that amount, what does that mean? It means that, that A ran out, right? A is my limiting reactant. Because I can only make 6.7 moles out of it. When I make that much of C, A is gone. Well, can you leave that number like that? What number? 6.7 or do you want to 
Oh, that is rounded. But like I mean, like oh, to one. Yeah. Yeah, I said it, I, I said it kind of under my breath, but I gave you all the numbers in it, integers. It, in principle, they're infinite numbers, sig fig. So just said ignore it. We'll round it to two. Yeah. yeah, I hate myself when I do stuff like that because I have to. Yes, <laughs> that's an extra step. Why? Why is it two sig figs? I'm like, I don't know, because I was stupid and I didn't write five point zero or four point zero. So because you run out of that first. Uh huh. The... Yeah. So let's say you wanted to make a cake, right? All right, it takes two eggs. But what if you only had one egg? You can make a cake, right? <laughs> make a half a cake. Yeah. cake. Yeah, that would be weird. <laughs> My daughter would scowl it. She would make me go get more eggs. <laughs> she wouldn't even ask. She would just start crying. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So questions on that? Now we're going to do it for grams. Okay, so we add another layer to this. And I gave all the molar masses down here so we don't have to worry about this. These are the molar masses. Which I believe I did get from my app, CMM. I don't actually calculate them. When I'm up here, by the way, on my phone doing the calculations of molar mass, I'm actually using that app to type it in. I'm not actually. Sorry to disappoint you, but <laughs> glad to have that talk about Santa Claus too. All right, so we want to know how many grams of chlorine gas are needed to produce 150 grams of that okay, titanium chloride, tetrachloride. So we're going like this. Well, 100. You want grams of Cl2, right? Because it's chlorine gas. Now, the first thing that you're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to start with grams of TiCl4, and then we're going to go to moles of TiCl4. Okay. Once we have that number, then we can go to moles of Cl2. And then we're going to go to grams of Cl2. What we've dealt with up to this point is just that inner part. This is what we've dealt with, just the mole to mole conversions. But we know in chemistry, we're not ever really measuring moles. We're always measuring things out in grams, and we're always observing things in grams. And so we have to do gram to mole conversions on either end. So I gave you the molar masses, so we don't have to do all the business of calculating, but I'm going to start with 150.0 grams of titanium chloride. And I want to get it to moles. I'm going to make this a little bit more compact because it's going to take up the whole line. It's um, 189.67 grams, right, for every one mole of TiCl4. And then the grams will cancel. And now I have moles. I have to do a mole to mole conversion, which means I need to use the mole ratio. And I'm going to put one mole at the bottom, yeah, TiCl4. And then what goes on the top? Two moles, right? of Cl2. And then I'm going to go to grams again. So chlorine 70.90 grams per mole. And so it's going to look like this. So now I get my calculator, and I actually am using my calculator. 150 divided by 189.67 times 2 times 70.90, I get 
one, four grams of Cl2. So it's 112.1 grams of Cl2. This chapter basically goes like this. There's a big introduction about like what this all means, and then it's just a bunch of problems, right? All related to the same stuff. So second to the last example, and then we're done. By the way, do you guys get that okay? Follow along, right? The process. If you if you need to go from grams to grams, you always have to do the mole conversions on either end, and then use mole ratio for the balanced equation. And you're going to have to write and balance equations. I mean, that's part of what we've been learning. Okay. Okay, read this problem. All right. Limiting reactant and percent yield. Two sulfurs, three oxygens make two sulfur trioxides. How many grams of SO3 could be produced from 15 grams of O2 and 15 grams of S? Kind of a bad example in some ways, it almost seems like. Yeah, that's good. Never mind. I take that back. Overthinking. What do you have to do for this one? Each you have two reactants, right? For each one, you have to calculate how much product you can make. And once you know how much product you can make, you can figure out how much actually, like theoretically, could be made. So limiting reactant. Either the oxygen or the sulfur is going to run out, and then you'll know. Okay, so we'll go ahead and set it up like this. I want to know the uh, grams. And actually, when you do these, you can stop at moles, but typic typically people go, go to the grams. So we're going to say um, grams of SO3. And we're going to start with 15.0 grams of O2. And then we're going to go grams of SO3. And we're going to go start with 15.0 grams of S. The reason I said it was a bad example is I probably should have slightly different numbers. But, uh, I don't like having the same numbers pop up. You know, people always don't know if it's a coincidence or supposed to be that way or whatever. It's... I'm going to write these out. You go ahead and try to. The molar masses are in the line above. But again, we're going to go from grams to moles, to moles, grams. So if you did it, you can look up. I, I finished writing out the calculation. Is the grams for sulfur supposed to be 32.6? Yes. I was getting ready to calculate. I looked at it. Go, oh. I think my mind wandered right there.
double check my work again, Will. <laughs> no, you can get your homework. It's all it's all piled. Go ahead. Get it next time. If you don't find it, it's all shoved down in this drawer down the bottom. Oh yeah, and then you like did half and then another half or something like that. Probably. Yeah, and then I didn't catch it until I got to the second half. <laughs> and I gave you credit for it. Yeah. All right. Look about right? You guys kept following along? I wanted to point a couple of things out because students will get confused like the first time they end up doing these things. You'll notice they'll be like, they'll get to this part and they'll say, well, that part's exactly the same. And that part is exactly the same. <laughs> it always is. Because once you, what you're trying to find for both is moles of SO3 gas, right? And then figure out its mass. And so though, that last part of the calculation is always exactly the same for both. So when you do the problems, don't be confused by that, okay? And again, for each one of these, when I did the calculation, I started with the amount I was given, converted to moles, um, slightly different molar masses, so don't get confused, they are slightly different. And then converted into grams of SO3, and so I get two answers. So how much do I make, theoretically? I make the 25 to 37, or the 62 and add them up huh what's the 62 <laughs> it's when i add them up right i get the 25 right i get whatever the least amount is it's this guy that's and then what's my limiting reactant o2 yeah so limiting reactants this guy A lot of times in the questions, like multiple choice, you're going to be given like this quantity and this quantity, which is the limiting reactant. And it looks like a short question, but you got to do all these calculations to figure that out. Okay. Now, if you only get two grams out, what's your theoretical yield? Right. So it's going to be grams, the percent yield, or percent yield, not theoretical yield. It's going to be equal to two grams SO3 divided by three, uh, no, 25 point zero two grams of SO3 times 100. All right, two sig figs in the answer. Seven point nine percent. So it ends up rounding to set eight point zero percent. Uh, not entirely unusual for an experiment, by the way. You want it to be 100%, but it doesn't work out that way. All right. Any questions? That's all I had to cover for today. I feel kind of bad. I should have made you guys stick around and do a worksheet. <laughs>